Diwali may be behind us, but we've still got some fire crackers lined up for you right here on CNB. Welcome to a brand new show. I am Siddharth and I partner with me, the new Nissan Magnite subcompact SUV. Everything you need to know about it, well, except prices, because the launch is only close to the end of the month. All of that is coming up for you right now. We'll also have all the accessory options on the Mahindra Thar. So lots to look forward to over the next 30 minutes. Let's begin with the Magnite. The Nissan Magnite comes at the right time when interest in the subcompact SUV segment is sky high. Two big reasons for that, the move to personal mobility in the post-COVID scenario and SUVs remaining the preferred body type for most buyers. And then there is the recent arrival of the Kia Sonnet and the Vitara Brezza based Toyota Urban Cruiser. Let's also not forget the facelift on the Tata Nexon. So it's a good looking car, yes, the proportions are nice too, yes, but let's quickly address the elephant in the room. It was a few years ago, we saw the Go Cross concept, which was supposed to be a Datsun, and yes, this is that car, it was destined to be a Datsun. The part that perplexes me is why, why, even though there was such a delay, because you were going to go from a Datsun model to a Nissan model, it's come in at least 18 months late from my calculations. Why then was no effort made to change that grille? This is the Datsun grille. You can recognize it from a mile. Is it not good looking? No, I think it's really attractive, but it's not a Nissan look. And that, like I said, why? I can't understand it. The new global Nissan logo making its first appearance. All that chrome, courtesy the Datsun look. Even the DRL very much in keeping with the facelift that we saw on the ready go so the face is very datsun but it's a nice modern face good amount of uh, shaping in the metal here a little rise in the hood implies a little bit of strength nice use of chrome within that headlamp cluster it all looks very sleek and well finished i have to say the magnite badging here is a nice touch the two-tone only on four colors and again even the cladding with a little design detail, wheel pattern, all very smartly and nicely done. You've also got a good amount of uh, light catching elements and contouring and sculpting in the metal as well as the plastic cladding down there. So all of that makes the car look very, very contemporary, modern and sexy, attractive. I also like the little bulge of muscle coming through, which creates a very distinct rear fender. It juts out. The light especially juts out, nicely patterned and yes, you have this element in the metal with the Magnite badging, standing proud. To me, this is a little bit Renault-like, I guess that's not too surprising considering they are Alliance partners. But on the whole, like I said, it's a really good looking car, I just wish it looked more Nissan-like. The 16-inch wheels are standard and yes, the top two variants get alloys. The car gets a 205mm ground clearance, roof rails that can take up to 50 kgs on a separately available luggage rack, chrome on the door handles and on the belt line. The car has four exterior cameras, one on each side, front and back to give you a 360-degree surround view. On the inside, the Magnite is very minimalist and while that might seem basic to some, it also gives a sense of airiness and space. The dash and central console are tilted towards the driver by 5 degrees. So the steering, height adjustable but not for reach. That's a negative for me. This is the top end, no doubt, and so you get the big 8-inch screen, which is nice, actually. It's uh, a good size. I really think it works. Climate control system, where the controls have little screens on them, also nicely done. And overall, it looks a little spartan, but it doesn't look 
cheap. It looks uh, quite well finished. The plastics are also pretty decent. Lots of controls on the steering wheel. New Nissan logo. Now that is optional. You have to pay extra to get the wireless charger, but you do get wireless connectivity for uh, CarPlay and Android Auto. So that's really nice. You don't have to always have the cable. And especially if you get the wireless charger, all the more reason you don't want to have the cable just to connect to the screen. So that's really great. It's a high-end car feature. The likes of BMW have it. Very happy to see that coming in here. Now, you've got lots of storage because there's space here. There's a USB point there in case you do want to use a cable. Cup holders. Strangely though, this armrest does not open up. There's no space under it. Or well, there could be, but we just don't know. The seats, fairly comfortable, though they feel a little light and sort of not padded enough. That's a bit of a cost-saving feature that seems to have come in. On the top end, you get fabric on the door, which is nicely done as well. And I do like the shape of the AC vents. In fact, the way the dash has been designed, it's so distinct, it's so different to anything that sits in this segment. I do like that. Dual airbags are standard across uh, the range. And then uh, you've got a few things in the back that I want to show you. Before that, a look at the digital cluster. Bright solid colors, the large screen at the center showing you plenty of information like mileage and importantly even TPMS or tire pressure monitoring system. I also like the unique position of the start stop button. Voice recognition, cruise control, that segment first 360 surround camera view give the Magnite a decent amount of tech. Want more? Well, an optional extra tech pack will give you that wireless charger, an air purifier, ambient lighting, better speakers and puddle lamps. Like the front seats, the rear seat bench also has a slightly flimsy feel to it. It doesn't feel well bolstered and ample. I wish it was because that would have added a sense of plushness that's currently lacking in this cabin. But great seat back angle and overall comfort on this seat is actually pretty good. It's enhanced by a terrific sense of space and actual space. Drop down armrest, two cup holders and a nice little niche here to keep your smartphone. <laughs> that's a good touch because it keeps in uh, it's in keeping with uh, today's requirements, I think. Isofix child seat mounts are uh, available on the top end version. That's good. No six airbag version though on the Magnite. Okay. The seats have a 60-40 split and the car's boot space is a decent 336 liters. Before you ask, the base XE variant gets a three and a half inch LCD cluster, all power windows, and a two-tone cabin. The XL variant adds on six speakers, audio controls on the steering wheel, climate control and electric mirrors. The XV and XV Premium then add the rest of the goodies. The Magnite has two engine options. The naturally aspirated petrol is a 999cc unit that makes 71 bhp and puts out 96 nm of peak torque. Here you get a 5-speed manual gearbox, but claimed mileage by the way is a generous 18.75 km per litre. The second engine is the turbo option and that's the car I am driving. Okay, first impressions on the Magnite, it feels light and zippy and that can go both ways guys because you could also think of it as being small. I don't mean small in terms of the sense of space, that actually is pretty good. You've got a nice commanding height as well so the SUV feel is intact. It's about how it feels like a small car to drive, it's kind of tinny and a little too light. That is where it kind of goes against it. The car's NVH levels or noise, vibration and harshness could be a lot better. In fact, the seat and doors shake when the car is on idle too. The steering is agile but very light. 
Now, luckily, the Magnite delivers on being Japanese, being a Nissan, where it counts. Hugely refined turbocharged engine and really well mated to this manual transmission, which is also very smooth. There's a huge amount of torque and that's very evident in the fact that even in city driving, you don't need to keep changing gears. It is a very satisfying driving experience because this engine is very energetic. It eggs you on and I'll tell you what, it also sounds pretty good. All right, so it's a small motor and it does have a little bit of that whine that comes through on the turbo, but it's got a nice little throaty growl too. Now that whine could have been avoided if we had better sound damping and that's where being built to a cost starts to sort of come to the fore. Like I said, the car feels tinny, but decent ride quality, pretty good suspension actually for a car of this size. And uh, on the whole, it's the drivetrain that starts to become the area where the Magnite scores. The turbo variant punches more power and that power kicks in sooner too. The turbo itself is also good and you will not feel a lag. The gearbox option here is the CVT that sees torque drop by 8 Nm. And yes, on the manual, the claimed mileage is 20 km per litre. The Magnite gets anti-roll bars for better handling. Cornering is not great at high speeds as the car feels light and slightly skittish. On the safety side of things, you get ABS or anti-lock brakes with EBD or electronic brake force distribution and dual airbags as standard. The Isofix child seat anchors are only in higher variants. Hill start assist, traction control and dynamic control are only on the turbo. Now let's check out the CVT. Given the purpose this car has been built for, which is primarily city driving, you're going to find the CVT to be the better option only from that convenience point of view. Absolute comparison, of course, the manual is a lot more fun to drive, a lot more satisfying as well, and gives you a better sense of control. But as CVTs go, I have to say this one is really nice. So the Magnite is ready to roll. The launch is just a week away, and if online leaks are to be believed, Nissan plans to go super aggressive with the prices. The naturally aspirated petrol will likely begin below 6 lakh rupees and top off under 7 lakh 75,000. The turbo will probably start around 7 lakh rupees and top off under 10 lakh rupees for the CVT top grade. If our guess on the prices is true, then the Magnite will undercut every other rival and will be awesome value making it a strong player in the subcompact game. Its alter ego, the Renault Tiger, will also grace us soon, and so by 2021, the segment will sport nine players, making it one of the most crowded and competitive segments in the Indian car market. You gotta tell me how you like the Nissan Magnite. Tell me on Twitter at Sid Patankar. And join me after this short break because we will come back with all the accessorization options on the Mahindra Thar. Welcome back. Interesting how on the Magnite, some colors only come in dual tone, like this vivid blue. Okay, let's talk about the Mahindra Thar, runaway success, huge amount of buzz around the car and why not? It has been a long time coming. What is now taking a lot of interest is what you can do with it to make it more individually yours. I'm talking about customization and all the accessories available for the first time from the company. Amir Naik tells you everything there is to know. An SUV has captured the hearts and minds of many an individual over the past decade. 
now in a new generation avatar is looking to add more fans to its kitty with the new generation of the thar then mahindra has aced all the departments looks technology and power and it's absolutely essential to do that with this car considering the legacy it has uh but there are of course those who want to add a bit of bulk who think that this is still not aggressive enough or probably they want to just make it unique uh to bulk it up obviously you'll have to go to a fitness center but we can't do that with a thar so what we'll do is accessorize it a bit Mahindra is offering these accessories to all its thar customers so let's dive straight into it now the pack that we've got on this car is called the dark lord and it's very simple to understand why it's got that name uh there's black splashed all over it and the key bits that you see here are one the add-on that you get on the front bumper that's new you also get this headlamp applique right here and the nice looking strip of black which makes uh, right on the front grill which actually makes the name stand out even this part this applique this black applique on the ORVM actually makes uh, a, a very strong statement you know a glossy bit so as to the premium look and that's what makes it unique on the road and all of this that is the dark lord kit costs 25890 rupees mind you for those wanting chrome mahindra has that option too and that's where the chrome hero pack comes in handy because you get a lot of chrome on it here we have some of it right from door handles to the fog lamp housing uh the tail light applique too looks really nice in chrome uh in fact here you also get the ORVM appli it just fits really nicely doesn't it the chrome kit costs 6830 rupees so premium looks at a good price of course the cabin too gets a slew of accessories which you can opt for now of course you get a lot of upholstery settings uh in the accessories department this one is the black and red combination there are six other options you can choose from but mahindra says that this one is uh, bacteria resistant and of course quick to wash it is very useful on a day to day basis the seat covers are priced at 6830 rupees and that's a pretty competitive price Now if you have the AX base variant of the Thar you can upgrade it to a two din head unit and you can also opt for roof mounted speakers Mahindra says that you can choose a 16 inch alloy wheel on the AX trim but that will come by November so there's enough and more that you can do to make your Thar stand out of the crowd and with these many options we are sure the owners are spoiled for choice it is time to say sayonara you've got to react to everything you have seen and more so the magnite how do you think it should be priced again something i'd love to hear from you and your thoughts on whether this car can revive nissan's fortunes here in india with that it's goodbye please wear your masks please wear your seat belts Join me next week.